All right. Uh, the Golden Globes. Holy shit. Yes, did take some time out, though, to watch some programming like uh, the Jets game and then uh, the Golden Globes. I almost didn't want to go downstairs because you had the Jets mm. game, yeah. which I ended up watching in my room Yeah, because I wanted to take the whole thing in. I, I, it's tough to watch it at a sports bar. Yeah, yeah. With fans because they, they all want to just kind of talk and stuff. Wanna talk and I, and I wanted to focus on the game. Don't need to hear your jibber jabber. So I, I decided to watch it, uh, you know, upstairs with a, a few people. We had a good time, and then the gold. Then it rolls into the Golden Globes. And you're like, there's no reason to go downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> the TV's way too good, and the bed's too comfortable, <laughs> and you got room service. <laughs> uh, but Ricky Gervais did exactly what uh, we've been hoping he he would do, and others would do yep. with these award shows. These award shows are a complete bore fest, and they suck each other's dicks, clits, and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> they just suck Covers each other off. Yeah, it's a big uh, self-congratulatory right. so yeah. clusterfuck. So then I have a, a host that actually takes shots and, and, and has jokes about the whole thing. It's great. It mm -hmm. makes you want to watch this every year. But what's going to happen, you're going to see the, mo the lamest Golden Globes next year. They're not going to have another Ricky Gervais or anyone close to him after what happened on Sunday. The only reason I even tuned in was because I knew Ricky Gervais was hosting. Right. Like, I could give a fuck. If it you was... read the results afterwards, what do you... I mean, I'm there for the speeches. If like, would... I didn't care. What if they said, uh, the Golden Globes hosted by Steve Carell? I'm not watching. Gone. I'm not watching. Exactly. The only reason I watched was to see Ricky Gervais. Yeah. And, uh... Uh, for for one at one point he was gone for an hour. Yeah, he was getting scolded. You think they were uh, scolding him for his funny comment, f they, funny interesting hosting? Well, a after the uh, the monologue, I think everyone went into panic mode, and they put him in a room and said, uh, well, uh, but, but, you know, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. So they said, "Fuck this, let him sit for an hour." They're just yeah. babies. They are babies. Like they want to lampoon everything, and they want to be able to skewer everything. But when a comedian does it as his job, mm -hmm. they fucking, they cry. Why can't mm -hmm. they understand it's a comedian? Making they do some, know. Making some just... jokes and, 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 and getting people laughing and getting the viewers involved. No one was uh, tuning out the Golden Globes after, after that monologue. They're like, holy shit, what else is he going to say? Actors are fucking boring. <laughs> They're boring. Yeah. Do you want to hear their speeches? Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to thank my business manager. And my publicist, I mean, we had a great team. Shut up! It, they are the worst speeches. Terrible! Shut uh, the hell up! Oh, I have so many people to thank here. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't have a lot of time, so... Um, first of all, the director, whose vision um, was just... He didn't have a vision, by the way. He just got lucky. <laughs> that same director you won't hear from for the next ten years. Tip. He got lucky. If he had some kind of amazing vision, he would be up there every year. It's just there's a lot of luck a in Hollywood. Poor fest. I was uh, I was also watching not only for Ricky Gervais but just to see um, how much more important some people are than others uh, when they the guy has his finger on the get the fuck off the stage music. Mm -hmm. Love when they get the get the fuck off the stage <laughs> music, and I would I would just love to know who that guy is and if he somebody. Like points at him, if it's his discretion, mm -hmm. the guy's just like, "All right, cut him, cut him off." Yeah, we're dude, and it starts low. Yeah, not no, it, and yeah, they it, they it goes push loud the really up. fast. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, uh, Ricky uh, had a blog, I guess. Well, let, let's have Ryan say it. Uh, Ryan in Jersey, Ryan, Ryan. This is why Ricky fucking rocks. Not only did he put on his blog that no one scolded him, no one gave him a hard time, but he went into why the media are such jerk-offs for making up these stories because <laughs> they want a more interesting story. They don't want to just hear like, yeah, I, I said some funny lines and then we had some drinks at the end. They want to make it up like it was some thing to do and they gave him a hard time. All right. Well, I don't know, man. The the president of the foreign uh, press, whatever. Had, Obama? Had a few things to say about Ricky oh. Gervais's performance. Oh, that guy! That, that I hate that guy. You saw that guy? No, I know who he is though. Oh, uh, well. yeah, <laughs> I do. Do you really? Yeah, I guess Ricky saying, Larry Bertleby. <laughs> I guess Ricky saying that he wasn't scolded backstage. They just, I think that's what they do. They, mm. they give him a long monologue and then try to get the show moving. Big so break. I, I do believe seeing in in the past the host sits for a while after the monologue mm. and then he starts coming back out. 
Mm. But we got the best of Ricky Gervais. Fuck it. We got it. We got uh, all the big moments from the Golden Globes with Ricky Gervais. He doesn't host again, right? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Because he's not the type of guy they might say, could you, could you calm it down and we'll have you back? He's not, no. He's not one of those guys. He, what he's you not going to calm it down. Get out. And then he thanked God. Uh, get out. <laughs> get out. Did you hear him at the end? I don't know if we got the clip where he thanks God for making him an atheist. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. was just a throwaway line as the credits are rolling. Yep. People are like, what the fuck did he just say? You're reaping the rewards. Yeah. Chasing the Yankee dollar. Yeah. Oi, Brent. Oi, Brent. Oi, Brent. You've achieved your dreams. Your dreams. <laughs> reaping the rewards. <laughs> but nobody was saying, Oi, Brent, you've achieved. <laughs> That's what we were saying. We had the exact same conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm 30. No in my 30s, yeah. like forget, <laughs> forget all that point about the Yankee dollar and all his success. No one's ever yelling Oi, Brent to him, ever. Oi, Brent. <laughs> yeah, you've reached your dreams, but he hasn't. You're reaping the rewards. No one's told him that. He hasn't done it. Love it. Oh, the music. <laughs> and I would like to... Uh, oh, fuck. I'll leave. I guess we could do it this way, because it's got to start low. And uh, lastly, um, I just want to thank... <laughs> they used to have class. <laughs> and now it's just, fuck it. They used to have class where they let them sort of finish and slowly build it, but now try it again. This no. is how it goes. Uh, also, the cast is just an amazing cast. If I could get through all the names of the cast. Uh, we'll be back with more. <laughs> Ricky Gervais, here we go. Anyway, welcome. The Golden Globes is a celebration of the best in TV and movies over the last year, voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's great! Come on, that's a funny line. They were talking about how bad that movie was, how there was no chemistry between Johnny Depp the fact that was nominated isn't, from what I've heard, it's really embarrassing. And yeah. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got the. Uh, they, 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 it's, I read one review that said it, it was as if both of their significant others were watching them during the scenes to make sure nothing was going on. And that's how plastic these two were together in the movie. Yeah, had, they uh, had no chemistry, you're right. None. The two big shots just in their big fancy trailers and their big fancy cars. Yeah. Just huh? a couple of big highfalutin big shots. Highfalutin. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you what. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen The Tourist. <laughs> Who has? Um, but, no, <laughs> it must be good, because it's nominated, so shut up, okay? And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going around that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... <laughs> doesn't care. That's exactly what a comic should do. He rules. Yeah, no. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? Do you want to go and see Cher? No. <laughs> no. Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> and he's Sorry. getting big laughs from the audience, right? And yeah, the groaning, too. And it's not like... I would love to point out the groaners. Who was groaning? I don't yeah. think show. I know Christian yeah. Bale loved it. He said it was, yeah. it was right on. And Paul Giamatti. And Giamatti loved, loved it. it. it it's, Who else it, loved it? I, I, I want a list of the uh, people that loved it. Because I'll go uh, see those uh, their movies. It's not like some comic th that that is used to being like squeaky clean and what part of the inside group... Uh, got up there and started bashing people. Gervais is known for his mm -hmm. uh, caustic wit. Yeah. That's so, the only reason a lot of us w watched, right? And the guy is so self-deprecating, too, whenever he writes a, a vehicle for himself or anything. It's not like he's uh, uh, not doing it to himself a lot of times. These people are such fags. Yep. Just knock it off. Ricky uh, talks about the Sex in the City broads. <laughs> we talk about the Sex in the oh, City broads yeah. on this show. There were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex and the City 2. Um, 
Uh, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> great job. Girls, we know how old you are. <laughs> I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fucking funny! Holy shit. <laughs> the show's old, get it? <laughs> <laughs> also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, <laughs> what? What? Oh, oh, oh. Probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> They're not here. Okay. <laughs> They're not here. Holy shit. That could have been, uh, you know, either Tom Cruise or it could have been John Travolta. I think. Uh, That's who I, I took from it. It was those yeah. two, right? Yeah. 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 If you had a, uh, if you were, we're going to put some money down on that. That's sure. what I thought he meant. Wow. That's what everyone thought he meant. That's but who cared? Good. It's a joke. Because they don't, they don't go down that road in Hollywood. It's one of those things right. everyone knows, but they don't talk about it. It's raping the rewards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Brent, you've achieved your dreams. <laughs> You're once. reaping your rewards. <laughs> no, but the reality was they were all looking at him like, who is this asshole? <laughs> <laughs> who is this blithering idiot? He's achieved nothing. That's uh, the best, man. <laughs> Fucking best. Should we get on with it? <laughs> Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, <laughs> please welcome Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah she's mm. fucking mm. juicy, man. That's, that's what they, you call a, a sexy broad. She's got a little sexiness going on. Yeah. Duncan Goodhue. So what do you think so far? It's good. It's outrageous great though. Great job. Not too out outrageous. No, it's 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 what he should have been doing. He's doing the exact. He's doing a great job at I, hosting. I couldn't tell you what else happened at the Golden Globes. Goofing on of the fucking. He was the whole Golden dumb, Globes. Elite fucking assholes. Uh, well, let's continue with Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. You know our next presenter from such films as Hudson Hawk. Look who's talking. Mercury rising. <laughs> Color of night. Fifth element. Yeah. Hearts war. Please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> he named all of his shitty movies, too. <laughs> Hearts war. Uh, Hearts war. <laughs> Hudson Hawk. Come on. He named all his shit movies. <laughs> That's so great. What a prick. <laughs> why kiss their asses? Exactly. No one knows what great movies he was in, so these why not people, have a little fun with it? These people, all year long, there's so many award shows, they just get their asses lapped all the time. That's all they do. The fans lap their ass all the time. And then uh, Gervais gets up there and tears them up a little bit for a night. And, and uh, yeah, I uh, uh. Let's go to Lance in Minnesota. Lance. Lance! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys, I think you missed that uh, Bonanza joke. Uh, it sounds like he was uh, kind of taking a shot of uh, one of the girls maybe looking like a horse. Yeah, I was thinking it was a horse joke myself. Oh, wow, you know what? Yeah, not only an old mm. fucking reference, but I think it was also a horse reference. I didn't so, catch yeah, that. Bonanza mm. had a lot of horses in him. But they, but that, they uh, he set it up as being like that old. they're old. We know how old you are. He's like one of these was in Bonanza. Could be a double-edged sword joke there, though. It's, it was, because he could have picked any show that didn't have horses. True. Wow. Yeah, I think you're right, Lance. Yeah. I think it was Damn. A, uh, I think it was an old horse joke. Yep. Yeah. And then Bruce came to the stage. After that great line. Sometimes Hollywood's do, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Ricky. Wow, did Bruce uh, fucking bomb on that line? What huh? did he say? Ricky. I just missed those. Sometimes Pacino's Hollywood point. does provide you with outrageous fortune. Wait, no, Ricky. J Jimmy missed it. So. But he mumbled yeah. his lines. Here it is. Hold oh, on. no. Yeah, he fucking blew it. Sometimes Hollywood's do, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Ricky. Oh, he did 
didn't deliver that well. <laughs> I, I hate award show banter. <laughs> that was a humana, humana, humana. That was no. He that was tripped someone... over it the way I would trip over a line in a scene yeah. with him. That was someone trying to go off the cue cards there, huh? No, uh, yeah, that might have been a red line. They're always bad. They're great actors, and they're terrible at reading cue cards. Christian Bale, thank God for comedians, he said, adding that he had no problems with Gervais's uh, zingers. I'm hoping he's going to keep going further. I'm hoping he's going to keep going further, and I'll be across the street at the Pantages. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Al Pacino, I heard he was funny, but there was somebody taller in front of me I couldn't see. <laughs> somebody somebody got to put me on their knee like a puppet. <laughs> I was cringing, hoping he wouldn't make a shoe joke. <laughs> or wigs. <laughs> his, hair, his hair was high. Oh, my was. God. A little too high. Read, it, read Al Pacino's quote there as Al. He's, uh, Anthony. I don't care. You could do it. He's a comic, so he's going for it. He's letting it go. The only thing he could really get uh, to is his, his own wit. He has to censor himself. I'm sure he plans some of it. God, the jokes really fly. You don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is Al talking about? So Al was a big fan. Stick it up for him. Also, Jim Parsons from uh, The Big Bang Theory. These guys should get credit for uh, liking Ricky Gervais. And Heather Morris from uh, that Glee show. Thought it was funny as hell. Funny as hell. Here's more Ricky Gervais, the best of Ricky Gervais from the Golden Globes. Next up, Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, it was messy. Please welcome Eva Longoria. That's the main guy he's going after. Good. Yes. God bless him. Great. And then the main guy hit the stage, and uh, this is what he had to say. Thank you, Eva. And, Ricky, next time you want me to help you qualify your movies, go to another guy. <laughs> Ooh. As I look out at this amazing array of talent, And he wasn't going for a joke. No. That, Funny comeback. No, no he wasn't You old asshole. <laughs> I didn't say that. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't happy with that. Of course uh, not, Jimmy. Jimmy cadaver. Don't you want me to qualify one of your movies, Jimmy? Is that what you're going to qualify? Who White knows? Chicks Incorporated? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> oh, this is the Robert Downey Jr. thing. Mm. Oh, no. I hope he didn't poke fun at... He poked fun at Robert, and Robert uh, Downey Jr. responded. What the entertainment shows have made a living talking about in seriousness. Right. It's okay. I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man. Two girls and a guy. Wonder Boys. Sorry, are these porn films? What? <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger. Really? Here. Up the Academy. Come on. He has done all those films, but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic <laughs> and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> now, he should be able to take of that. Of course he should. Everyone. Of course he should. He should be able, uh, able to take that. He didn't mind playing a drug addict who was blowing people. Like, why can't you be made fun of when you fight? Come on. Aside from the fact uh, that it's been hugely mean-spirited with mildly sinister undertones, I'd say the vibe of the show is pretty good so far, wouldn't you? Mm, he was sort of trying to do both there. Yeah, right? that was okay. He was trying That's to do like, both. Don't be a baby. Hugely mean-spirited. These pampered jizz buckets, they're so used to publicists just lapping their balls and coddling them. <laughs> Oh, they're fucking awful. Lapping their balls. They, but that's what they're used to. Yeah. A publicist who just do nothing but slave over them. And protect them from anything like this. Any of them can't take a good beating. Mm -hmm. No. They're fucking boring. So why am I obsessed with them? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm a faggot, too. <laughs> <laughs> the best of Ricky Gervais. Uh, Steve Carell and Tina Fey. He intros here. Ooh. What am I laughing Our next at? presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who... <laughs> 
who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful <laughs> Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. That's very funny. Killing a cash cow and the ungrateful Steve Carell. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> he can't improv. I, I, ah, whatever. He's the <laughs> fucking worst. I, I don't know why I hate him so much. Not a big not, fan. Not a fan of Carell. First couple seasons of The Office, he was really good. I liked it. And I loved him on The Daily Show. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where he made his bones. That's where he made his bones. Did you see Date Night? Yeah. I guess we could just end the conversation right there. You know what? You're right. <laughs> and finally, one more from Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. What can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer, and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances, starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13, and Saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian? Tim Allen? Yeah. That's funny. That's fucking great. Come on. <laughs> well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. Neither of which is he now. They have nothing. Tim Allen's supposed to be a funny guy. That's all you got after that beating you took? Eh. Jesus. Eh. I think he did very well. Who? Ricky Gervais. Oh, he did wonderful. Yeah. I would have had to have comebacks. Oh, yeah? I would have slammed them good. Oh, Chip would have fucking nailed them. I would have yeah. right out there. Boom. Boom. Yeah, look at you over there. You can't even say words because you're from another country. <laughs> Speak English or something. Yeah, what are you doing? You're talking with a bunch of little losers. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Chef just gets mean when he's flustered. <laughs> yeah, I hope your family dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're not going to see Ricky next year. No, that, I don't think that's so. That's a guarantee. Maybe another award show will pick him up, though, and said, fuck that. Oh, 20 another, million another people watch. Another award Whatever. show, yeah. yeah. And, and like now I said, that, Now I that he's getting it. all the publicity, maybe another award show says, fuck that. Well, we'll the Oscars has a good couple of people. It's going to be a good Oscars this year. Who, who's the host? Um, there's two of them. They're two. splitting the duties. Uh, <laughs> Anne Hathaway. And who's the actor? It's a guy and a gal. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Franco, um... Frank, right, James Franco? James Franco. From Spider-Man 3? Yeah, yeah. And well, Anne Hathaway. Are you sure that's who it is? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not Steve Martin? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great Oscar host, actually. Actually, because he he's kind right. of caustic and a prick. He was all right. He was funny. I mean, compared to... I can't watch Steve Martin in anything now. I like when he's doing like, snarky stand-up. He's. I really have to go back and watch, like, planes, trains, and automobiles, things like that, to laugh at Steve Martin. Uh, like, if I see him now doing anything, I just, uh, ugh, ugh, stop it. It's going to be a good Oscars this year. Oh, hamburger. Hey, man, you make fun, but he's one of the greats to follow on Twitter. Is he? Steve Martin? Oh, my God. <clears throat> have you seen his Twitter? I can oh tell you, God. not Nary a one. I've read some of them. Some of them were actually funny, but I didn't. Oh my god, he's unbelievable. Twitter was made for Steve Martin. I'm telling you. Read a few of these. Oh, Let me right. see. What's his? Uh, let's see. Uh, According to the new zodiac sign dates, I'm now a kitten. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, he does. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find one that would be even good either way. I, see. I guess he's vacationing. I paid a lot of money to go on vacation on a private jet, 
but it has a pilot. <laughs> I do like the one. Enter your email address and get a free track from the upcoming Rare Bird Alert. I don't know what that means, but it's kind of funny. I don't know what it means. No, but I mean, like, it's just a bizarre, weird thing. Oh, it's his new album. (laughs) Oh, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. It's just silly. It's just a plug, Jimmy. It's a plug. (laughs) Let me go to Cassius in Brooklyn. Cassius. Hello, guys. What's up, buddy? Been a while. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I just, I just gotta wholeheartedly agree with you. Like, that Steve Carell, he's just so fucking boring. It's I'll always with that stupid little boy's haircut of his, and the just the the face is so hard to look at. The giant nose, and it's just never funny. It's just it's just horrible. Yeah, I don't know why uh, Hollywood loves this guy so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's made about twenty movies in the last four years. Yeah, and what, it seems what, like it's always. What was the best Steve Carell movie? Character. Would you say? I couldn't What's even. That? What was the best Steve Carell movie? He was in Forty Year uh, Old Virgin, right? Forty Year Old Virgin. He was all probably right. Probably because, but now looking back, but the back, cast around you're thinking, him was and, and, amazing. But like, and because you also didn't know, the, you didn't know a lot of those guys yet. And it, you're like, wow, these guys are funny, man. It was also well before he was uh, over as overexposed as he got. You think there's an overexposure got, thing oh, happening? Yeah. Too? After that, let he was all his, over the place. Let me see his movies. Let's try to be fair with with this. <laughs> I want to find now, one more. There's, there's, no, there's no sense in trying to be fair because he's just always the same character. Like, yeah, it's the same, like, too. corporate boob, bore, you know, like. Well, yeah, he, never... was, he completely ruined the, uh, the uh, Bruce Almighty franchise, whatever it was called. Oh, and then Get Smart. Oh, he was yeah. the Get Smart was guy. Get Smart. <laughs> Anchorman, was he good in Anchorman? Yeah, I, I guess I'd have to. Was he? From a bit there, yeah. I'm, honestly, I, I don't remember if he was good in that. The 40-year-old virgin aunt was saying what? Yeah, it was good, uh, but y- you'd have to put yourself back in time to watch it. Okay. Because now that you know kind of what he does. and I like that little independent film, Little Miss Sunshine. He played a more serious role in that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was good in I that. think he was good in that. I never saw a four year old version. Ensemble. Wait, cat. there was a Bruce Almighty and then he did Evan Almighty? Oh, yeah, it was a sequel. Oh, yeah. my fucking yeah. Lord. Bruce Almighty was Jim Carrey. Am I correct? Oh, uh, and he was in I Bruce guess Almighty. He was in it. Oh, I, d- I forgot that he was even in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then he took over the lead role uh, uh, in Evan Almighty. Okay, gotcha. Dan in real life. Horton hears a who. That's just a voice. Get smart. Date night was horrendous. Despicable Me, that's just another voice movie. Dinner for Schmucks, I, I was fucking pissed by that movie because they kept yeah, the yeah. PC and safe. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Ned Finney. There's not one movie Ned Finney. there that I watched because he was in it. No. Yeah, and even even the, the rare moments where he's where he has been good in movies, he's just ruined he's ruined everyone's memory because because it's just the same you know, cast into the same thing over and over. Like, he's just ruined... Uh... not a fan. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah. Like I said, I was a fan for the first couple of years of yeah, yeah, the English office because I was a huge fan of the British office. But then that got kind of... I was in. I haven't watched uh, The Office in, fuck, years at this point. Yeah, there's no reason to. I bailed a long time ago. It's... it's... I do still watch it, I admit, but it's not because I think it's a good show and it's a favorite of mine. I just have to see, like, how bad, like, how far removed can it get from what it's supposed to be. Right. And yeah. it's so far towards the other way. And every time I watch a new episode, I'm like, well, that's it. They can't go. How many, how many years have they done? It's been shit for, like, f- f- three seasons. But how many years have seasons. they done The Office? Because Ricky Gervais, is, uh, the original was 12 episodes. 12, finale, right? yeah. 12 great episodes and one done season finale. 2005 to 2011. Yeah. Six years. Mm. That's it. Man. Yeah. Seems like it's been on longer. Because the, I felt like the, Ameri- the American office kind of switched focus. I felt like the English office, like, sure, there, you had Brent in there. He's a great character. But it was really more about the relationship between uh, uh, Pam, uh, not Pam, I'm sorry, uh, Dawn and, and uh, Tim. And then when you get to the American office, it was like, well, that, that could happen too. But it's more about the retard boss being crazy. Mm-hmm. And, and he did start just becoming a retard and not just the goofy, awkward guy. Yeah, because Gervais was great because he was the boss who just made things awkward. And it was just yeah. he was a real person. And everybody could relate to that. I, I can't can't relate to any of Steve Carell's. No, Steve Carell Michael turned Scott? into a retard. Yeah, yeah. Just a re- Why is he still worried? He'd be fired thousands yeah, of times. Yeah, over yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he still awkward though? Cool. A little bit. Cool. <laughs> I like that. That awkwardness. You're like, wow, oh, this poor guy's not a talk. Yeah. Thank you, Cash. Let's go to Dave in Alberta. Dave. 
Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, What's Dave. up, Dave? What's going on, you guys? Oh, not much. No, I'm just sitting on the toilet here taking a crap. Are you actually discussing oh. this bullshit? What's that? What? Oh, no, I asked if you were discussing this. Are uh, the Golden Globes or, yeah, why? Golden Globe Awards. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why the fuck would you? Because it was a <laughs> big award that was on TV and the writing about it in the press, and we like Ricky Gervais, and we like the fact that he slammed a lot of people there. Your phone sucks. Hopefully you're falling down your own toilet right yeah, now. Yeah, what do you want us to talk about the day after? Yeah. It's a it's a big deal, this Ricky Gervais if thing. If this was your Dude. show, what would you yeah, talk about? We talked about our weekends. What would you like us to talk about? Uh, Dave, you got to call back when you got a better Comment? phone. We'll take your call, but your we phone can't sucks. hear your your phone is terrible. Of course, we're talking oh. about Ricky Gervais because we talk about this all the time. How yeah. how it's so soft out there in general, and then you finally get a guy that's willing to 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 go for it, <clears throat> put and, it out there, and now there's problems. Yeah, and uh, we're going to continue talking about the Golden Globes because Robert De Niro had such an amazing fucking speech, man. The magic, the magic that is Robert De Niro, <laughs> one of our great actors of all time. Uh, yeah. You want a Cecil B. DeMille, or is it Cecil? Cecil. Cecil B. DeMille Award? Is that what they gave him? Is that what it was? Um, for what? Being at least a decade in between good movies? <laughs> <laughs> I love De Niro, but Jesus, Bob. Oh, God. It's been well, a string of duds. Are you allowed to call him Bob? I don't, yes. I don't know if you're up to that point in your career. Call him Bobby. The worst part of that Jimmy's whole career thing is taken was off, that... but he's not at that stage where he could call him Bob. I made him laugh. That's all that matters. When? I heard him when he saw me do stand up at the cellar. Oh, you heard the laugh? I, I, I it threw me. I, my next joke, I fucked up because I was doing my set. I knew he was in the room. Was it the Cape Fear laugh? It was. Uh, h how was the Popkins laugh? It was the one night my flip cam didn't work. That piece of <laughs> yeah, 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 it was, it was yeah. more that. It was that type. It was like that. Ah! <laughs> but it was. Like, it was like a Rupert Popkin laugh, and it threw me. But there's also the Cape Fear laugh. You just kind of yeah, blew yeah, by no, I know that, that line. But it was That's the uh, really that, that maniacal. Was, yeah, that was more of a twisted laugh. No, no, no. It was yeah. more the Popkin. The, uh, the worst thing was they showed so many clips from his great movies. Like, they're showing all of his great movies when he was younger and, and just doing magnificent movies. And uh, then he gets up there, and it's just, oh, that's the meet the fuckers guy. Why are you doing it? Uh, meet the fuckers. Fuckers, whatever. Fuckers, dipshits, lousy movies. Well, here's De Niro. This was an, an amazing moment. Really, just terrific. I, I know it won't be long before Matt Damon is up here receiving his own Cecil B. DeMille Award. And it will be my honor to present it to him if I'm still alive. So, uh, and I plan to be around for a long time, hopefully. We got it, Bob. We got so it. So I want to thank the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, but don't wait. Oh, they, they skipped ahead with my uh, thank you for this extraordinary honor. Cause. I was very, very moved and gratified when you made the announcement two months ago, well before you had a chance to review little fuckers. <laughs> yeah. My name is Rupert Pupkin. I saw those. <laughs> it's okay. We all have our jobs to do. The reviews weren't good for the little fuckers. I don't think so. People are seeing that movie, though. They're enjoying the hell out of it. <sighs> Give you my spot. <laughs> Thank you for your tireless work in promoting our industry all over the world. Thank you. He wasn't even getting applause. And the important thing is that we are all in this together. The filmmakers who make the movies and the Hollywood Foreign Press Association members who in turn pose for pictures with the movie stars. Bring it over here. And I, I'm sorry more members of the foreign press aren't with us tonight, but many of them were deported right before the show. Smooth delivery. Uh, can we hear that line again, please? Hey. This is the guy <laughs> that delivered... Uh, give me a stage where this bull here can rage. Rage. In a, in, a, in, a, in a choppy way that was perfect. Like, he was really just a fucking, a, a schlubby ex-boxer. Right. And he was a brilliant. This is the guy that butchered, uh, if he's a degenerate, when he was being Jake telling Joe. And it was the best purposeful trip I think has ever been filmed. But here he is really trying to speak. This is him telling a joke. 
Well, I, I'm sorry more members of the foreign press aren't with us tonight, but many of them were deported right before the show. Well, they were deported. 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 I like the little noise he made right before. He <laughs> deported. <laughs> I love him, but oh, he should just never talk. Uh, no. We do it deported. Deported. Right before the show. Because he was going to say before, but he realized the cadence and taste. The, 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 the ported, he might have to say before the show, but it's right the before show, the show. Right before the show. Along with most of the waiters. And, and, Ooh, why are they groaning for? Because waiters are um, usually for the, foreign. for the rest of you, I hope your papers are in order because Homeland Security will be checking them just as soon as they're through with the, the full body break. scans of Megan Fox. Megan Fox has grown into a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> kind of went a little long with that, yes, oh, that subject, huh? It's uh, and, and, and there was not. It was just. It had. It had no bite. There's nothing to it, right? There's no bite. There's no. There's no rhythm to it. There's no timing to it. It's just. There's nothing oh, memorable about it. No. It's just drivel. Oh. I want to thank Dick Clark Productions for that impressive film tribute. It's going to be hard to pull off false modesty after that. Thank you. Raising Bull, Goodfellas, Godfather 2, Awakenings. You know, Awakenings was one of my favorite movies. Great performance by Robin Williams. Gives a shit. I just completely forgot that I was in it. Yeah. But there were a lot of my movies missing from the presentation. Uh, uh, there, would, uh, there would have to be, there have to be when you, you condense a four-decade career into three minutes. I look at it and think, Christ. How about a... <laughs> we say Christ? Yeah, I think uh, so. But we all know that's not the story. There, there were other films, though, lots of them, and I, and I kind of wish they'd been included, too. I think you would have enjoyed seeing a few seconds of Stanley and Iris. Everybody, everybody's fine. Frankenstein, Marvin's Room, Stone. Some of you would be, would be seeing them for the first time. <laughs> most most of you would be seeing them for the first time. You should have said that first. You didn't even watch the screeners, did oh. you? Oh, oh holy shit! He, sh he should have just said most of you would be seeing them for the first time. Be more funny. <laughs> is this brutal. is going great. He's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that jerk? You could have seen Stanley and Iris, but my irises need glasses or something. <laughs> Chip De Niro. Chip De Niro. <laughs> You know, my mother's a saint on earth, or something. <laughs> Most of you would have seen her for the first, first time or something. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, One more from Robert De Niro. The energy is oh. being sucked out of this room. Oh, God bless his heart. to De Niro. Now, Ricky Gervais, here's how I imagine the evening started. <laughs> the band strikes up the music... And you introduce me. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. Along with this award, I'm, I'm announcing a DVD box set of all the work, of all my work, so that if you've, you've missed, say, Jackknife, the first time around, you'll be able to catch up. It's... And I'll be selling them in, uh, in the lobby right after I post for some more, <laughs> more pictures with the remaining members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Uh, these movies, all of them, are like my children, except that my children are more expensive and you can't remake them in 3D to push up the grosses. <laughs> up the you grosses. do the best you can with your children. You do the best you can making movies. At a certain point, you just have to let both of them go and hope for the best. It's, it's up to the audiences to decide if it's entertainment, the critics to decide if it's good, and ultimately, posterity to decide if it's art. And for the children, you just hope the movies do well enough so you can keep them in private schools. <laughs> Thank you for this. Thank you very much. Good. Right, so he's not an off-the-cuff type of guy. No. Not an off-the-cuff type of guy. <laughs> if you said, what's your name, you'd have to pull his license out. <laughs> you know, you know the thought, I have to take some... 
pose for some pictures with the foreign move the card press. <laughs> <laughs> How do you remember lines? Uh-huh. You know, posterity to determine if it's Art Carney. Art <laughs> Carney. Oh, God, Oof, yeah. oh, wow. Uncomfortable, huh? <laughs> Damn. Let me see. Uh, Randy in Illinois. Randy. Hey, brother. Hey, buddy. Uh, fucking De Niro and I don't know the other guy from Meet the Fockers was on Letterman. It's pretty uh, awkward, dude. De Niro oh. wasn't talking to Letterman for some reason. Oh, it's Dustin Hoffman? You mean the uh, other guy? I heard yeah, Dustin Hoffman. I heard, I heard it was awful. Of maybe maybe was. we can find a clip of that. We of don't have to play the whole awful. thing, but maybe a couple clips. Yeah, like very uh, awkward. More yeah. visual, but... Was it? Yeah, we'll take a look. Yeah, I, I did, guess it'll work. I did hear it was bad. All right, boys, see you. I would do All a right, good bro. interview with De Niro. I'd like to have De Niro in a room for 15 minutes. I would yeah, do a really? really good interview. Yes. What would you do? What Just talk you, to him. What would you do you differently? You think he would... Could you open to that? Yeah. Yeah. That, all you can do is talk about his movies. But yeah, I would ask him. He doesn't seem to want to talk about anything. Exactly. When you see him on talk shows, he just doesn't want to talk about it. What do you do in a scene if the other guy is struggling? Ask him to say, that was a good uh, question for Stacey Keach. Um, uh, you know, just, you know, hope he gets it. You wait and, until, the, you know, you know he, he gets the part. The director tells him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So how long before you do a role do you actually decide how you're going to do lines? Mm -hmm. Like, do you make that decision before, or is it true that I've heard that you don't make that decision until basically right before it's time to shoot so you don't get caught in bad habits? (sighs) You know, hey, you know, I just, I don't know, both. (laughs) (laughs) It is just so bad, man. Um, Do you think... uh, People have the same perception of your work now that they had 20 years ago. I mean, you, you haven't won an Oscar in a while, but, I mean, you've done taken on different kind of roles. I mean, is, do you think people's perception is different? Uh, I don't know. You just make a movie and hope <laughs> that they, uh, people have eyes. And kids in private school. See it. <laughs> they can't. Uh, Kevin from Connecticut. <laughs> Kevin. Good morning, guys. Ripple. Hey. That speech was enraging bullshit. What's oh, that? Oh, I didn't hear you. Yes, you did. Damn it. <laughs> blew it. <laughs> enraging bullshit. That was really bad. <clears throat> All right. He's just not a good speech maker. No. He's, uh, it's weird that he actually, he does speaking engagements, and I don't know why. Who would hire him? I mean, to hang with De Niro, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. They don't care what's coming out of his yap. Yeah, they're not even listening to the... No. The whole time, they're like, holy shit, that's De Niro. Ugh. It's like, but he'll, he'll do, like, a three-night engagement. He probably gets a fucking million dollars. What does he talk about? We should find out. I don't know. I know this weekend he's going to be in Austin, Texas, oh. at the Cap City Comedy Club. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thursday, Friday, ah. Saturday. If you want to see uh, Bob De Niro not... <laughs> CapCityComedy.com January 20th wow. to the 22nd. Good, good one. one, huh? Good that one. A good one. Cap City. That means everybody should wear caps <laughs> to the city. <laughs> Austin. Well, the powers that be will tell me if Austin is there. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh... We got know. Stephen Merchant on the radio. Yes. Oh, I would... Stephen Merchant. Hi. How are you, Stephen? I'm all right. Yeah. How are you guys? Great. You're sitting are we on live now. Is it? Yeah. 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 Is it? The... What are the rules? You can swear, can't you? Yep. You could swear. You could do whatever you want. Right. I this, yeah. is, this is why. This is American freedom of speech. <laughs> the uh, Ricky Gervais uh, on the Golden Globe. Right. Um, what's the real story there? And I think it's what Ricky said. Like everybody had a great time with it. But the news. Why would they? Why would they try to make it seem like a lot of people were upset why about Why would okay, why would the news want to make mm. it seem like there was a story? I just Let's just had, sit and think about I that just, one for a I moment. I just said something really stupid. Yeah. Jeez, um, what are you <laughs> fucking me? Yes, no they they uh I, what I don't what I think the, the story is that everyone was really offended and that, yeah. like he was off air for an hour because he was being told off. I was back there with him, no one came back. In fact, they were rude. They didn't even come back and say <laughs> hi. But they certainly didn't come back and tell him off. Uh, th- um, were people offended? I don't know. Maybe. They, they, they seemed to be laughing as much as they were ooing mm-hmm. and eyeing. Um, I don't know. It, it seems like it's a, they, someone's manufactured a story out yeah, of this. Yeah, because it was Which is the, good for the Ricky. only reason right. I watched it. It was yeah. coming on. 
And uh, I said, I want to see this because Ricky Gervais is hosting it. That's the only reason I'm right. watching. Who gives a shit about the Golden Globes? And uh, and that's why I watched it. And then to to see like all the flack the next day, it's like, but that's what you're getting. You, do yeah. you know Ricky Gervais? But I don't. Also, do I, you, I really genuinely don't think Bruce Willis is offended if you make a joke about. It. He's Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Yeah. He, I, he made Die Hard. That's enough. He, it's like I, I, it's, this is the thing. I just don't buy this idea that everyone's devastated and yeah, you know, yeah. weeping well, into their into their coffee the next day. I just don't buy it. You know, they're movie stars. They're millionaires. They've won the lottery of life. Yeah, yeah. You know, here's the thing. Yeah, they're, they're, they fucking win the lottery. Now they're giving themselves awards right. for winning the fucking lottery. Yeah. You know, enough already. When I was a writer on the Oscars for Chris, <laughs> oh, okay, Jesus. Uh, it was that a would lose, be Chris Rock, Steve. It okay, was, right. <laughs> it was a lose lose situation. I thought it was like a party, an Oscar party. No, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it was a lose lose in my opinion because if he wasn't edgy enough then his fans right. are going oh look he watered it down you know and if yep. he was too watered down then it's not right, right. you know how, if you're going to get him that's what you're getting yeah okay so deal with it that's why now, ricky Gervais that's did what ricky such a decided good, to do he yeah. did such a good job because he, yeah. yeah he went after people it was funny it was genuinely yes. fun and people are saying they haven't watched an award show and actually laughed at the the host mm -hmm. in in years right and and it's funny in a way that the uh, that he not only is he the one that people are talking about after the event none of the mm -hmm. award winners but right. normally as well the Golden Globes is normally the conversation's dead after people have dissected yes. the dresses yep. they're still yeah. talking about it like a week later you know so yep. it surely yeah. is good for the globe I had a, I I had a two uh, I had a two two winner parlay on the Golden Globes. Oh Jesus! That's a, bad, that's a gambling oh, bet. Okay. Not a good one. Uh, no, not a no. good anything. That was okay. That so I'm, a I'm, very, I'm fucking eight for eight for three hundred and ninety percent or whatever. Uh, that I'm fuck dropping. You were talking about. Uh, yeah, the fucking Golden Globes. Anyhow, you know what the fuck? No one told you. Right? They this don't is talk also about... this is the weirdest thing for me. We did the show extras. We talked about it earlier. That was a show that seemed to be trying to skewer celebrity, trying to laugh at the kind of you know. Much as we, I love movies. I love movies. I've worked with people. I you know, in movies myself. I enjoy the process of it. But you know. Uh, we were sort of laughing at the people who take themselves too seriously, mm -hmm. the pomposity, the arrogance, the ego. They gave us a Golden Globe for that show. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, That's what's weird. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute, yeah. You obviously identified right. with what we were doing. Right, and now we and, come on the show and, then, and yeah. he does yeah. it. Because um, <laughs> that's real! Yeah. I don't know the actor's name, it doesn't even matter, but he was doing this, uh, like, uh, public announcement, you know, whatever you do about racism and, you know, you, every, we all got to get along and he was gay and the whole thing. And and then I, I saw one night at a comedy club cracking up at one of the most racist comics up there sitting there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just complete fucking hypocrisy yeah. coming out of their fucking... Well, they are. A lot of people are full of shit. Yeah. They are. That's the word. But, you know, bear in mind as well, though, we are, we're, we're, we're bad-mouthing bad -mouthing, like the stars and stuff like they've been... I don't think they are I don't think they were I don't either. They're yeah. publicists. Yeah. Right, so I don't know who it is. I, you know, I think also, you know, this is the nature of the of Twitter and online now, is you can generate a story. Make Appar up news, uh, yeah. yeah. Apparently Piers real. Morgan, someone just sent me Piers Morgan, apparently claims to have generated the where did Ricky go for an hour story probably because oh, really? he knows Ricky's on his show tonight yeah, and yeah. Uh, oh, very smart. smart people yeah. are saying you were responsible for the uh, whole Gervais uh, controversy at the uh, Golden Globes that I was to blame that you actually leaked out that there was a problem between the production staff and him and uh, him being mean-spirited and that <laughs> nobody really did care backstage that it was your you you um, just fibbing. <laughs> no, no. I, a, I never said it. B, it's completely untrue. But C, had I thought of it, I definitely would have done, done it. it. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got credit for it anyway, because that's what I, I read in a few things that. Uh, no, you know, my view is that some, like, the more mischief, the better. You know, I, they, I subscribe to Oscar Wilde's great saying: "If there's one thing worse than being talked about, it is not being talked about." So, yeah, uh, if, if people want to believe that kind of stuff, game on.